first Sunday of Advent in the Christian calendar, the season just after Thanksgiving, the first Sunday of thanks, first Sunday after Thanksgiving, all the way through Christmas Eve is the season of Advent. It's when we celebrate the coming of Jesus as a baby, but then also the second coming. So as we began this morning and prepped at that, that prepped and did Advent at church, I wanted to share with you some ideas to make the Advent season even more special for us with our children. So first of all, think about a few things. So think about this for just a minute. When you, what do you want for your children when they grow up? If I asked probably eight out of 10 parents, I'd say, I just want my kids to be happy. I hear it on TV all the time, you know, kids that are sick and get well, or kids that have cancer and things like that, and the parents say, I just want my kids to be happy. Well, of course, I would like for my kids to be happy as they grow up, and at the same time, I have other ideas for them, and much, I think, more important things for them. I would like them to be like Jesus. As Christians, I think that we've got to really instill that in our children. I want them to have good manners. I want them to be kind people. I want them to be successful in the careers that God leads them to be. And to do that, I have to prep them. I have to get them ready. I have to teach them. Just like a child doesn't naturally know to stick a napkin in his lap when he eats a meal. Doesn't naturally know to chew with her mouth closed. We have to train them in these things. Well, we have to do the same thing as Christian parents. It doesn't naturally come for them to know the teachings of Jesus. And we can bring them to church, but that's not always enough. So let me help you. As we teach these things like manners and gratefulness and having good morals and ethics, we have to be deliberate about them. In Deuteronomy 6, it's one of my favorite passages. Kind of strange because I really enjoy the New Testament. But in Deuteronomy 6, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord the, your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And that's called the Shema. Jewish people teach that to their children and they say it multiple times a day. Now, another part that's really great is this. It says, you shall teach them these laws diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Action. The point of that is we should be deliberate about the teachings that we have for our children. So through this season of Advent in particular, we have to put the reason in front of our children. The world puts all these things in front of our children. You know, there's the elf on the shelf and all these funny, cute ideas that you find on Pinterest and YouTube and Facebook and all of that, which is fun. You see Christmas movies and they all talk about finding the real meaning of Christmas, which usually has to do with loving your family or showing gratefulness or whatever. And it almost never has to do with the birth of Jesus unless it's a Christian-based movie. You hear things um, about decorating it, and you hear about Black Friday, you know, the shopping and how it's so important to get the right thing and the sales. And all of those things can be great, and I enjoy them just as much, if not more, than the other guy. But at the same time, we have to tell our children, especially during this Advent season, why we celebrate Christmas. And that is the coming of the birth of Jesus. So we celebrate Advent, the Christmas season, which is coming celebrate the birth of Jesus. And so, how can we do that? Well, I'm going to give you many ideas throughout this season. So if you stick with me on teaching kids about God, I will help you with that. Let me give you a few ideas. Put a nativity scene or two or three or ten in your house. Let your children play with them. Learn the biblical stories that talk about the birth of Jesus, the beginning of Matthew and the beginning of Luke, which are the beginning of the New Testament. Those are the stories. They're two different birth narratives, stories of the birth of Jesus prior to his birth and even after his birth. Read those stories to your children. Read them quietly to yourself and learn them. Do things with your nativity scenes, and I'll model this for you later, but take away baby Jesus. I have mine missing right now because I couldn't find him in the Christmas decorations, but <laughs> take away baby Jesus and have the kids find what's missing. Have them tell you the story of the birth of Jesus after you've read it to them. So let's be less concerned with planning the elf on the shelf and planning that perfect Christmas light night and planning those cookies. Do all that stuff. It's fun if you want to, but if you put more focus on that than on the birth of Jesus and teaching your kids, then we're messing up as parents. Let's be deliberate. Stay tuned to teaching kids about God this season, throughout now, all the way through Christmas Day. And I will post things, maybe videos, maybe blogs of ideas for you so that you can be a more effective parent and a more effective teacher for your children. So they don't just grow up to be happy, but they grow up to be great human beings who know why we celebrate the birth of Jesus 
and how they know what Jesus was about, why he came, and how they can be Christians. There will be a link to my blog within the description.